Shalom, shalom. All glory to the heavenly father, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We are the prophets of old. We out here to warn you people, our people, of the upcoming destruction that's about to take place here in America. Right? It don't really matter if you hearken or not, we still got to convey this message. Because in that day, you can't say that you wasn't warned by the servants of the Most High. Right? I know y'all see a lot of things heating up in the world. You see a lot of pestilence, a lot of diseases. Right? You see a lot of homosexuality. Right? A lot of transgenders are now carrying AR-15s and walking into uh, churches and schools and shooting up little children, man. Right? You see the war growing up with Russia and Ukraine. You see the Chinese and the, and the Brazilian folks done dropped the U.S. dollar. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia done dropped the U.S. dollar. Iran done dropped the U.S. dollar because the money ain't worth nothing, man. It's toilet paper. It ain't worth shit. So lock it for the language, but the money ain't worth doo-doo, man. Right? So we here to warn our people to turn back to the most high in these last days before it's too late, right? I'm gonna start off with the book of James, chapter two and verse five, Baba Kishaw. Right? And this fine hour, man, the most high don't give a damn if you rich or if you poor, man. He just wanna see you repent and come back to him in this final hour, right? The most high not dealing with just rich folks. Right? He's not just dealing with poor folks. He's dealing with everybody. He want to see everybody turn back to his laws in this final hour. Bring that out, King. This is the book of James, chapter 2, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Right. The Most High have chosen the poor, right? But rich in faith. Right? Just because your bank account ain't on swole like all these rich folks, that don't mean the Most High not dealing with you, man. The Most High still love you, even if you got zero dollars in your bank account. He want to see that you rich in faith, man. Right? Faith is the uh, substance of, it, of uh, things that's not seen. Roughly paraphrasing. Right? He want to see you be rich in faith. He don't give a damn if you out here homeless begging for change. He wants you to believe in him and have faith in him and his only begotten son that you're going to be delivered out of the hands of your enemies, right? Out of the hands of your oppressors. The most I don't care if you damn a millionaire, right? If you got $20 million in your bank account. If you don't have no faith, you rip, you uh, so like it, you're poor in the eyes of the most high if you are without faith. You can have $500 million in your bank account, but if you are without faith, you're poor to the most high. Right? Let me get the book of Proverbs 22 and 2. Right? We got to understand that the most high don't have no respect of persons when it comes to uh, financial uh, income, when it comes to financial situations. He don't have respect of persons, man. The same way a rich man can get judged for sinning against the Most High is the same way a poor man can get judged for sinning against the Most High. Bring that up. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 2. Bring it out. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Right. The rich and the poor meet together. Right. We on the same playing field when it comes to repentance and salvation. Right. We on the same playing field. You're not, you're not more of a man because you're financially stable, right? Because you're, because you're rich. You're, you're not more of a man than, than a poor man, right? We, we, the Most High made all of us, right? And he view all of us the same. He looking at the inward parts. He not looking at what you have or what you don't have, right? He looking at those who have a sincere heart towards him, right? That's what the Most High looking on. He looking at the inward man. 
And if you are without faith, you are a piss poor man or woman. And a lot of y'all are faithless out here. Y'all don't have no faith. You can see it by your actions, your deeds, right? The satanic lifestyle that you like to live that go against the most high. You can tell that you without faith, man. Because if you have faith in the most high, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now, right? If you really have faith in, the, in, in, in who the world called Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be out here doing what you're doing right now at the end of the day. Let me get the book of Job 34 and 19. Our people got to wake up in this final hour and repent and come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. Right? What's going on? No, come here to word. Come here to word, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching repentance to my people. What's your nationality? What's your nationality? This ain't your country. This the white man country. You don't run nothing in this country but your damn mouth. Right? And that's what's wrong with everybody, man. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. Uh, they want to feel like this is their country, right? Like they own any land in this country. That man don't own no land. This man don't got no hospital, right? But this is his country. No, this is the so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians country that was taken from us by the so-called white man, right? This is his country now because he run this country. He run this nation, right? At the end of the day, bring that out. It's the book of it's the book of Job, chapter thirty-four, verse twenty. Bring it out. No, verse nineteen. It's a lot. Bring it out. How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they all are the work of his hands. Right. So don't get it in your mind to think that just because you're rich, that the Most High is dealing with you. Right. Even, even on the poor side, don't think just because you're going through afflictions and you're less fortunate than a lot of people, don't think the Most High just dealing with you, man. Right? The Most High dealing with all of us the same because he created us all. Right? He's the maker of all. Right? Bring that out. Book of Job, chapter 34 and 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. Right. You see that? It doesn't matter if you're at the bottom of society or if you're at the top of society. The Most High can judge you and put you to death at his, at his will, man. Whenever he feel like it. It don't matter. Right? So don't think you above the next brother or sister because you got a little change. Right? Don't think that. Get it out your mind to think that uh, gain is godliness, man. Right? Bring that out. And, uh, a lot of people get it misconstrued, man. Israel get it misconstrued sometimes. They think just because they got a little money that you above the next brother or sister, but that's not the case. Right? That's not the case. And I can't stress it enough that that's not the case, man. The most I deal with individuals, how he want to deal with individuals, whether you be rich or whether you be poor, man, right? Because gain is not God, right? Bring that out, gang, once you get it. It's the book of Timothy, chapter six, verse six. But godliness, with contentment is great gain. For, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Huh, that wasn't what I wanted, but that's a good precept, man. Right? You gotta be content with what you have. If you're an Israelite and you're poor, right? If you live in paycheck to paycheck, glory in that in that tribulation, man. Glory. Still glory. Right? Because the mo it's nothing for the most high to take the poor and make them rich, right? Be content with what you have. So like you. Get, oh, okay, first 10, 6 and 5. Come on, bring that out. 
This is the book of First Timothy, chapter six, verse five. Bring it out. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. For from such withdraw themselves. Supposing what? Supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw themselves. Right. A lot of people think just because they got a little uh, bank account that's on swole that that's godliness. That the Most High dealing with them. Right. So that gives them a reason to look down on their brothers and sisters because they think that gain is godliness, man. But that's far from the truth. Right. That's, that's very far from the truth. Gain is not godliness, man. It's people in this in this world that have received benefits from the Heavenly Father and they haven't known the Heavenly Father, right? Meaning they don't keep his commandments. They don't keep his laws, but yet they are rich. You know what I'm saying? A dope dealer, man. A drug dealer, a kingpin, right? That Does it make him godly because he's rich? No. This man done sold dope to his people and done destroyed the minds of his people and got rich off of their pain, right? That doesn't make that man godly, right? Does it make a man godly because he want a record deal, right? And he cast away his bowels, he bend over and let another man pop him up, up the back, right? To get a million dollars? That man is not godly. Gain is not godliness, man. You can get money in righteousness or you can get money in wickedness. The choice is yours, right? It's a lot of brothers pimping on our sisters out here, right? That doesn't make them godly, right? Because they whoring out their sisters and getting money off of them, using them up, right? That doesn't make a pimp godly because he got money, man. So y'all got to get it right and stop, you know, misjudging situations when it comes to the most high, right? Let's go to the book of... Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 16. 12 and 16. Because our people got to understand, man, you got to you gotta store your treasures up in heaven. Don't store your treasures up on this earth, man. Right? Store your treasures in heaven. Stick to these laws, right? Learn these laws. Get your Bible, open it up. Learn the laws of God. Learn what you have been offending your power. Learn, right? And then apply that knowledge to your life. You have to store your riches, your treasures up in heaven. When you read the Bible every day, when you rehearse the righteous acts, that's how you store your treasures up in heaven, by loving your neighbor as yourself, man. Right? You wouldn't go pull a damn gun out on yourself and kill yourself because you got on some nice shoes, right? Because you got on a nice outfit, because you got a little money in your pocket, right? You wouldn't go do that to yourself, so why are you going to do that to your other brothers and sisters? Right? You got that evil eye towards your neighbor. That's not storing your treasures up in heaven, man. That's you being carnal and worrying about material things here on this earth. Right? But our Lord gave us a parable about storing your treasures up in heaven. Right? Bring that out. God. It's the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Right, so the ground of this certain rich man brought forth abundance of fruits and treasures, man. Right? Read. And he taught within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. So this so this rich man has so much in abundance, he didn't have nowhere to store all his riches. Right? He like, damn, I done made a lot. I got a lot. I didn't, my bank account ain't big enough. I need somewhere else to store my riches at, right? Read. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Right, so this man, he done, he done thought of a wise idea, right? He done thought of a wise idea, right? He said he gonna tear down his barn and build it bigger so he could store more treasures inside his barn, right? So he wanted to knock down the small barn because he got so much in abundance, he wanted to create a bigger pavilion or facility to store his riches, right? Read. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. 
take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Right, so this man had goods laid up. He was on deck, he was stacked up, right? Now he feasting, being merry, right? Being happy, he done made, he, done, he trying to enjoy the fruits of his labor, right? Read. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy, thy, shall, thy, shall, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall do those things be? So the Most High called him a fool, man. Cause you trying to uh, save all these riches, right? To keep it, to keep it for yourself. But little do you know, the Most High done required your soul tonight. So how are you going to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor, man? Right? You trying to get all these riches and just store it up for yourself, right? Instead of giving to the poor, instead of doing charity, instead of giving alms, you want to make all these riches and keep it to your damn self. And you think you're finna enjoy those riches. But the Heavenly Father, he is requiring your soul tonight. Right? Read. So he, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. He what? For he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And that's a lot of you niggas out here. A lot of you uh, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. Right? Y'all laying up all these riches. Y'all busting y'all ass, working overtime all week. Right? You don't even spend time with your children. Right? Because you working so damn much. You missing special days. You missing high holy days with your children. Right? Because you working so damn hard trying to make a, make a killing, man. You trying to make a killing. You trying to get rich in this society, but you haven't been rich toward the most high. Right? You haven't been rich toward God. Yeah, you rich in this world. You got nice cars. You got fancy cars. You got a big fat crib. Right? But you're not rich toward the Heavenly Father, toward the one that made you. Right? You don't even tithe. You don't go to church. You don't do you don't do alms. You don't do charity. You don't look out for the homeless, man. You don't take care of the widows. Right? But you rich. You balling. You got it out. You got it all. Everybody broke in your eyes. Everybody beneath you. Right? But you're not rich toward the Heavenly Father. That's who we're supposed to be rich toward, man. We're supposed to be rich towards the Most High. Right? We're supposed to be faithful. Right? We're supposed to be wise. Enlightening our people to this truth, man. You trying to please Satan and his minions. Right? You get a thrill out of going against the Most High. You get a thrill out of being a homosexual or a prostitute. You get a thrill out of it, man. And you feel like you're going to do that for the rest of your life. But guess what? The Most High finna require your soul tonight. Right? The Most High got deaf angels running rampant through Babylon right now, man. Right? I just seen an a, a article with this uh, Chicago drill rapper. He killed somebody and he took a picture where all the blood was at. He took a photo shoot where all the blood was at. And then the next day, he was dead in the streets, man. Right? Because the Most High required his soul that night. He was getting rich. He was trying to uh, get attention from social media. Right? He was trying to gain riches of the world. You know, flexing all his money. But guess what? He wasn't rich toward the Most High. Right? He wasn't rich toward the Heavenly Father. So guess what? The Heavenly Father sent the cruel messenger and put him to death, man. Right? And that's the moral of the story, man. Be rich toward the Most High and forsake this world. Right? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 18, Baba Kishah. Right? 18 and 18, King. And it's a, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of pastors in these churches. Right? It's a, it's a church down there on every corner out here in L.A. Right? But it ain't teaching you a damn thing, man. Them churches ain't teaching you a damn thing. Right? They teaching you how to be a sinner. How to continue living in your sin. They're not really reproving you and trying to bring you out your, your transgressions. They're keeping you in your transgressions. By lying to you, man. By bearing false witness on the Heavenly Father. And bearing false witness on His only begotten Son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. Yahweh shot, right? 
The Most High didn't raise up them pastors in them churches to teach you the truth about the Bible. He just didn't do it, right? He has chosen the poor in the world that's rich in faith to teach you the truth about these scriptures, man, right? Bring that out, King. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Right, so the most I say he's gonna raise up a prophet from among his brethren, right? From the from the children from the children of Israel, from the tribe of Judah, man. Right? He said that's like unto Moses. Meaning Moses taught the laws of God. So this prophet that he raised up is going to teach the laws of the Heavenly Father, man. And that's our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Jesus taught you who the world called Jesus. Jesus taught you. He taught us to keep the laws of God, man. He didn't teach us to break the commandments. He told us to repent and sin no more. What is sin? Right? Let me get uh, 1 John 3 and 4, man. He taught us to repent and sin no more, right? What is sin according to the Bible, right? What is sin according to the to the Holy Scriptures, right? Uh, we gonna get we gonna get you what sin is according to the Bible, because a lot of people. A lot of people, especially people in the churches, don't really know what sin is, man. But we're going to teach you what it is tonight, right? Bring that out. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Bring it out. Whoever committed sin transgresses all the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is what? Sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the laws of the Most High, man, right? Sin is breaking God's laws, right? Yahweh Shai taught us to repent and sin no more. Don't break the laws of God no more, man. Right? A law of God is thou shalt not eat swine. Right? It is unclean to you. You're not supposed to be eating pigs, man. But is the pastor in the church telling you to refrain from eating swine? No. The pastor in the church telling you pray over that unclean animal and then it'll be clean. Right, which is a damn lie. The Bible never said you could pray over an unclean beast and eat it, and now you okay. Right? That's contrary to the teachings of Hamashiach Yahweh, who the world called Christ. Yahweh taught us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments the same way Moses did, man. Yeah, Deuteronomy 18 and go to 19. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and 19. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Right. And whosoever out of the children of Israel don't hearken to that prophet, right? It should be required of him, man. Right? Whosoever. Don't hearken unto the prophet that the Most High raised up and don't listen to the words, right? Because the Most High speak by the mouth of his holy prophets. It ain't just it ain't just us coming out here telling you to repent. This the Heavenly Father, the one that created the heaven, right? The one that created the earth. He's the one telling you to repent and sin no more. So if you don't hearken to that prophet, the Most High is going to require it from you, man. Just like he required it, uh, the rich man who uh, the rich man who wasn't rich toward God. Just like how he required it from that rich man who wasn't rich toward God, God is the same way he's gonna require it from you, right? Because you're not rich toward the heavenly Father, because you're not listening to his servants, right? Because ultimately you're not listening to him at the end of the day, right? And the pastor in the churches are not teaching you to hearken to the prophets, right? Verse 20. 
Verse 20. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of the other gods, even that prophet shall die. Even that prophet shall what? Even that prophet shall die. T.D. Jake T. D. shall what? Even that prophet shall die. Creflo Dollar, he shall what? Even that prophet shall die. Joel Osteen, he shall what? Even that prophet shall die. These pastors in these churches gonna get put to death, man. They not speaking the oracles of God, right? They speaking the oracles of Satan. They giving you a prosperity gospel message, a feel good message, but they're not telling you of the pending danger that's finna befall this whole nation, right? They're not telling you to come out your sin before the most I kill you, man, right? They're not teaching you to obey the commandments in them churches, right? They're not teaching you to forsake this world. Stop celebrating Easter, right? Stop celebrating Valentine's Day. Stop celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving. That's not in the Bible for us to celebrate. Right? Let these heathens have their, their, their pagan traditions and their heathen customs. That's not our custom. Right? Bring that out. This is the book of Deuteronomy 18 and 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Okay, come on, Salaki. Read that again, King, one more time. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the things follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Right, so if a, a pastor in the church tell you, hey, you give, you give, uh, you plant your seed, meaning pay your tithes, right? And they say, God gonna bless you with a new car, or God gonna bless you with a new house, and it don't come to pass? The, mo the most high didn't speak those words. That was that man's own words that he spoke to you, man. Vain glory, vain opinions, vain speech, right? The most high didn't send that prophet, read. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if, they, if things follow not, nor come to pass, is the thing which the Lord have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of it. Thou shalt not be afraid of these false prophets that's teaching you to go against the Most High, that's pushing that prosperity gospel, that's telling you that God loves everybody when God don't love everybody, man. Don't believe them pastors. Don't believe them teachers in the churches. They gonna get you put to death, man. Right? Because their words are not uh, flourishing. He's speaking presumptuously, man. He's speaking his own words to you, how he feel, right? He's not speaking, thus said the Lord. And he's not able to speak, thus said the Lord, because he's not living, thus said the Lord, man. It's a difference between us and them. We really rehearsing the righteous acts, right? We really confessing our faults when we fall short and trying to get better, man. We not trying to get put to death for transgressing the laws of the Most High, man. Let me get the book of uh, Jeremiah 23 and verse 1, okay? Right? All these devils out here, they have no clue as to what's going on, man. You know, it's a doctrine in them churches that they like to push that the devil know the Bible better than you do, right? They say the devil know the Bible better than you do right and that's not true man it's, it's not true right the only way the devil can know the bible better than you is if you don't read the damn bible for yourself that's the only way that's the only way he gonna know it better than you right but once you read the bible for yourself on a daily basis you meditating on it day and night ain't no way satan can come against you when you know that word for yourself man the same way our Lord rebuked them in the wilderness after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights where the devil tried to trick up our Lord Yahushua and, and tempt him, right, to get him to go off. Our Lord went to the law, man. He went to the law. He went to Leviticus. He went to Deuteronomy, right? He, he stayed in Deuteronomy, matter of fact, with the devil. 
He stayed in Deuteronomy, right? And the devil couldn't confound our Lord. Why? Because our Lord knew the word, right? You see our brothers, you know, in this in this truth, man, they 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 get they get into debates with them fake Jewish imposters, man, and confound them, right? Because the devil don't know the Bible better than his children do, right? Don't ever let the church tell you that the devil know the Bible better than you do, right? Start reading for yourself. Bring that out. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 1. Bring it out. One be, woe be unto the pastors. Woe be unto the pastors, meaning destruction. Read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. It's destruction to you pastors because you destroy and scatter the sheep of the most high pastor. Because you come out here feeding them lies, man. Letting them live in their damn vomit, right? You letting our people roll around in their whoredoms, right? You letting our people roll around in their wickedness. Y'all not reproving our people, man. You're not trying to correct them. You're not trying to tell the, the daughters of Zion to put some damn clothes on, man. And stop twerking on TikTok, right? You're not telling our men to be men and stay in your household and raise your damn children, right? You're not teaching our people to refrain from evil. You're teaching our people, you pap, you pap, you pacifying our people, man. Why they in they sin? Because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Hey, we don't give a damn about your feelings out here, right? We don't give a damn about nobody feelings, right? It's thus said the Lord and that's it. You can take it how you want to take it. But the most I say, hey, daughters of Zion, put some damn clothes on, man. And stop being whores and thoughts, right? The most I tell men, hey, stop looking at your brother with an evil eye. Stop lusting after your neighbor wife, man, right? And we telling you the same exact thing. Don't shoot the messenger, right? Don't kill the messenger. We just conveying a message. Whether you hearken or not, whether you hear or forbear, it don't matter, man. We doing, we getting the blood off our hands. And we had a lot of blood on our hands, so we, hey, we scrubbing, man. Read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Right. The Most High is against you pastors, man, because you feed our people boo-boo, man. You feeding our people straight shit, man. False doctrines, false teachings, false beliefs, right? False hopes, right? You teaching our people to love their enemies, man. Our Lord didn't teach us to love our enemies. He taught us to love enemies of our own household, of our own nation, right? But I don't have to love you damn people that's killing our daughters in these streets, that's killing our sons by the, by the goddamn sword, man. Every day you see a black man getting killed in America, man, and no justice being done about it, man. Every day you seeing our children oppressed and lied to, right? And trotted down in these wicked ass streets, right? And nothing is being done about it, right? But guess what? The Most High say he is about to visit the evil upon their doings, man. Because the pastor in the church allows this to go on, right? The reason a lot of our men are being put to death in the streets because the pastor is not teaching our people to fear the Lord, man. You scattering the flock. You teaching our people not to believe in the Most High, right? That's how you scatter the sheep. You you run your own people out the church house, man, because all of the backbiting, the murmuring, right? With all the gossiping that be in them damn churches, with all the wickedness that go on in that whorehouse called the church, man. The pastor is the biggest pimp in the world, man. He pimping you out of all your tithes and offerings, man. He pimping you out your damn salvation, right? Them pastors are, are, are bloodthirsty vampires, man. That's all they is. And the Most High is going to visit upon the evil of they doing because they lying to the people, man. They telling you straight up lies. They telling you straight up lies in them churches, man. Let me get uh, Jeremiah 28 and 8, King Baba Kishore. Jeremiah 28 and 8. 28 and 8, King Baba Kishore. Yeah, they telling you lies in them churches, man. 
They want to see you trot it down. They want to see you at the bottom, right? You you come in, you come into church with a little bit of change, and when you leave out of church, you broke, man. It can't even pay your damn car note, right? And the pastor don't give a damn. He don't care. All he wants is your money. He don't give a damn what type of message he give you, right? Bring that out. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter twenty-eight and verse eight. Bring it out. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against king, great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right, so the mighty prophets before us, like uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, right, Joshua, right, uh, Baruch, Habakkuk, right, the prophets before us has prophesied against many kingdoms, man, against many mighty kingdoms. Moses prophesied against ancient Egypt, man, right? Daniel prophesies against ancient Babylon, man. Right? You know what I'm saying? Prophets have prophesied against many great kingdoms. What the hell kingdom T.D. Jakes done prophesied against? Now, what kingdom damn Joel Osteen prophesied against? Now, man. The Most High done woke up his prophets in this final hour, and we prophesying against Babylon the Great, which is known as a miracle for all the wickedness and all the atrocities that they perpetuated throughout the whole earth, right? Of war, right? Of pestilence, of famine, right? That's all that's going on right now. War, pestilence, famines, man, right? We done prophesied against many countries, man. The fall of ancient Rome, we prophesied against it. The fall of ancient Greece, we prophesied against it. Right? The fall of uh, ancient Assyria. Right? We done prophesied against it, and guess what? It really failed. Right? It really failed. They thought Rome was going to last forever, man. The Romans thought Rome, the Edomites thought Rome was going to last for eternity, man. But guess what happened? The Most High flipped it upside down and destroyed it. Right? The economy collapsed in ancient Rome. Right? The economy collapsed. What you think going on right now? The economy is collapsing right now as we speak. Right now as we speak, man. Right? And that's what we were prophesying, telling our people to come out of America because you don't want to fall with this wicked ass kingdom, man. Right? You don't want to die with this kingdom. Precept. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 8. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries, whether I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. That's right. That's right. The Most High going to put us in our own place, man. Right? That's the reward you're going to get for, for dealing with the Most High, keeping the commandments and keeping the faith, man. You won't be destroyed with this wicked ass king. Right? And that's what you ultimately want in this society, man. You want to be on the winning team, right? You want to be on the winning side, and that's the side of righteousness, of obedience, right? Of sacrifice. That's what side you want to be on, man. Let me get the book up. Con, con, we in North America, the North Country. That's going to be the second exodus, right? We in the North Country, he's going to deliver us and put us in our place if we be obedient. You don't want to fall with America, right? Let me get, uh, let me see, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 1. Bring it out. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it. Do what? Set thy... The, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And we are commanded to prophesy against Mount Seir. What is Mount Seir? That's the dwelling place, the dwelling place of the so-called white man, which are known as the Edomites, according to the scriptures. That's his dwelling place. 
is dwelling place, right? But Mount Seir is also considered America because America is his dwelling place, man. So we have to set our face against Mount Seir and prophesize against it. I've never seen a pastor in the church set their face against Mount Seir and prophesize against it, right? Read. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Right, the Heavenly Father, the creator of the heaven and the earth, he say he is against Mount Seir. Now why in the hell is the Most High against Mount Seir, man? Why is he get, Why is he against the so-called white man that run America, right? Maybe it's because of genocide, right? Maybe it's because of rape, robbery, murder of innocent people, man, right? Or maybe it's just because the most I don't like the color of their skin. No, that ain't it, man. It ain't just about skin color, man. These people have did atrocities throughout the whole entire world, man, right? They will come in your land, your country, and kill you for your resources, man. Right? And show no mercy to the young or the old. They don't give a damn, man. Right? Them devils done put up abortion clinics in our communities so we can kill our unborn children. Right? That's why the Most High is against Mount Seir. Right? He is against them because they are the most hateful forsakers of God. He not just against them for no reason. They have a track record. And you could you could read that track record in the scriptures, man. He covet fields and take them by violence, man. He lusts after other people's land and he take it by violence. That's why the Most High is against Mount Seir. You Idumians, the so-called white man, right? Verse 3, read. Verse 3. And say unto it, Thou sayest the Lord, Yahweh, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. The Most High say he's going to stretch out his hand against thee, man. And once the Most High stretch his hand out against you, there is nothing you can do about it, man. God. Right? Read. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Right? He said he going to lay your cities desolate. Right? Salakia. He said, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Because once you see this place get nuked, once you see warfare on this country, man, in, in this country, right? You're going to know that it was the Lord, man. Couldn't nobody but the Lord, the Heavenly Father, bring destruction to this place, man. Because he's been holding back the destruction for a long time. He's been letting their sins pile up and pile up till it reached the heavens, till he got to do something about it. And right now we at that time where the Heavenly Father is starting to do something about it, man. You can feel it and see it in the atmosphere, right? You can see the transition of power right now as we speak. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel, by force of the sword in the time of their calamity in the time their inequities had an end right so Esau Edom the reason the heavenly father is against you right because you shed the blood of the children of, Israel, of the children of Israel by the force of the sword right that's why he's against you man because you've been killing his children you've been killing his babies man the apple of his eye right and you think you ain't got to pay for that? You think you just going to get away with centuries and centuries worth of murder, rape and robbery? Right? You think that's because the, the old slave master from 300 years ago, you think he not going to pay for his crimes because he died rich? He died with a plantation full of slaves, right? He died with a bank account full of money, right? But he didn't get punished, though. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't punished. He died with a smile on his face in an old age, man. But the Most High going to put him right back on this earth. He got him right back on this earth to live out their judgments, man. You got to come see the Most High. And everybody going to know that the Lord done it. 
right? You have shed blood of the children of Israel for far too long, and you still shedding blood. It ain't like you stopping. You going harder, man. You coming up with creative ways to kill us and get away with it, right? Verse six, read. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God Yahweh, right? And he lived for eternity, man. There's no, there's no end to the Most High, right? The Most High said he got blood prepared for you so-called white people, you so-called Chinese people, you so-called Arab people. He got blood prepared for y'all because y'all haven't hated blood, man, right? Esau loves blood. He's bloodthirsty, man. He's bloodthirsty like a damn vampire, right? But the Most High gonna, gonna let blood pursue you since you haven't hated blood. Blood is coming for you. Blood is gonna be knocking at your door, right? It's gonna be knocking at your children doors, right? Just like it was knocking at that door at that school shooting last Monday, man. Blood is gonna pursue you since you didn't hate blood. Now y'all can see how it feel for a change to have your, your child murdered at the hands of your enemies, man, right? Right? It's time for blood to pursue these devils, man. They love blood, man. They probably they probably take a blood bath every night, man. Right? They probably hop in the shower and damn blood come out the damn faucet. Right? You know, the ambulance ride past, you know. Esau probably shed somebody's damn blood, man. They gotta go clean it up. Right? Because they love, they love blood. They bloodthirsty. They eat, they eat meat with blood in it, man. They don't even like their food cooked. They like to have blood all on their plate when they eat their steak, man. And then they lick the plate after the, the, the damn steak gone. You know what I'm saying? Because they love blood. Right? Bring that out, Ken. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. And Yahweh thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies. See, right now, the curses are being lifted off the children of Israel. Because, yes, we've been under curses, man. We've been under curses for centuries, right? We've been under curses for, for centuries. And one curse that hit us real hard, right? That affected our community real hard was the economic curse, man. The economic curse hurt us, right? That hurt us bad, man. That's why we at the bottom of society right now. We can't keep a dollar in our community to save our life, man. We always shopping with the heathens. Right? He cursed the basket of thy store. Cursed are we in the city, cursed are we in the field. But guess what? The most I finna start putting these curses upon our enemies, man, in these last days. Now you finna start seeing the so-called white man being murdered in the streets, man. And no justice being done about it. Especially when them when them gooks come over here, right? When them Chinese come over here and start putting them to death, ain't gonna be no justice for them damn devils, man. Ain't gonna be no justice, no peace for y'all, right? Y'all finna be subject to payments, like you already are. America like $30 trillion in debt right now. They are subject to payments, right? When you in debt, you gotta pay back, right? No ifs, ands, or buts, man. And they gotta pay them people back. And they gonna get it one way or another, whether it be digital currency or blood, man. They gonna get their money, right? They gonna get their money. The most I say he gonna put all the curses that was on us on our enemies, man. Right? The same way we had a, a, a economic system going, right, in Jerusalem. In the ancient world, we had our own system going, but the most I took it from us. 
he cursed our economic system. So now he done put the curses on these on these damn devils. Now their economic system is cursed, man. It's cursed, right? The BRIC countries have dropped the U.S. dollar, right? The U.S. dollar means nothing no more, man. The U.S. dollar ain't worth two pennies, man, right? Brazil and Beijing, right? Just came to an agreement with China to drop the U.S. dollar. Saudi Arabia, Iran has dropped the U.S. dollar, man. Russia has dropped the U.S. dollar. It ain't worth nothing. And while you people selling y'all damn souls for this valueless money, you look like a fool in the eyes of the most high, man. Bring that out in uh, Ecclesiastes, man. Uh, let me get let me get a crazy ass just saying it on. The book of Syrac, chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, and it raises foes. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. A wise judge will instruct his people. Esau Edom is not wise. He don't know how to instruct his people, man. Right? And the government of the prudent man, of a prudent man, is well ordered right a man that is knowledgeable a man that deny himself and look after the, the sake of his of his uh, society of his people right and the government of a prudent man is well ordered Rick. uh verse two as the judge of the people is himself so are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is such are all they that dwell therein. Right, so as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So when you have a good leader, right, a good king, your people are going to be good as well. They're going to move how the king moves, right? You following the king's lead. You behaving how the king behaves, right? It's saying what manner of a man the ruler of the city is, such are they that dwell therein. So whether it be good or bad, right? If you have a wicked king, the people under the king gonna be wicked as hell. Starting with his ranking system. Anybody that serve under the king gonna be wicked. Therefore the public, the citizens, the civilians are gonna be wicked, man. And that's what you see right now in Babylon the Great. You have wicked kings running the earth, known as Idumia, the Edomites. So therefore society is wicked. Because they just following the lead of the king. Right? Read. Verse 3. An unwise king destroyeth his people. But though the prudence of them, which are the authority, the city shall be inhabited. Right. An unwise king destroy his people, man. Right? An unwise king destroy his citizens. Right? That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Let me get that in Proverbs. Proverbs 21. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. Bring it out. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Right. When the righteous is in authority, the people rejoice, man. They don't have to worry about being destroyed unjustly. They don't have to worry about having an unfair trial. Right? They don't have to worry about being killed by the hands of the police, man. Right? Because it's a it's a righteous king. The people gonna rejoice. But when the wicked bear a rule, the people mourn, man. We are mourning out here in these streets. We are weeping. We are sorrowing for seeing all the, the, the bloodshed of our brothers and sisters. To see our brothers and sisters freaked out walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard, man. It hurt our soul to see that, man. Why? Because the wicked bear rule right now. The wicked is in authority. Right? But an unwise king destroy his people, man. 
right? Um, Book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 3. It's uh, an unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Right, but through the prudence of them that are in authority, right, the city shall be inhabited, right? Dealing with a prudent man, right? The city is going to flourish, right? You're not going to kill off your, your, your civilians, your citizens. You want to you let them prosper and flourish. You're going to keep the economic system rolling, man, and keep it going and getting better and better, right? Verse 4. Verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of Yahweh, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Right, the power of the earth is ultimately in control by the Most High, man. The power of the earth. Everything that's going on right now is in the Most High's control, right? This is his movie. This is his show, right? The power of the earth is in the hands of the Most High, right? And it says, and in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. So in due time, the Most High going to put the righteous back in authority, man. He gonna set one that is profitable. Because right now, Esau, Edom, hey, ain't nothing profitable about the system that you got going on, man. Ain't nothing profitable about robbing your citizens, man. About lying to your citizens. Nothing is profitable out of that. Nothing is profitable about you uh, killing your money, man. We make money for your businesses, right? We work. We at the bottom of the totem pole. We keep your businesses going, but yet you killing your servants, right? At the end of the day, that's just what it is, right? Which you are not supposed to be your servants, and we're not going to be your servants for that much more longer, right? Because the Most High is about to set up somebody that's more popular. Right? And Yahweh shot is way more profitable than the damn devil, man, than Esau Edom. Right? Read. Verse 6. In the hand of Yahweh is the. Oh, slack here. Verse 5. In the hand of Yahweh is the prosperity of man, and upon the person of, of the scribe shall he lay his honor. Right. In the hand of the Most High Yahweh is the prosperity of man. Like I mentioned earlier, it's nothing for the Most High to make a poor man rich. And it's nothing for him to make a rich man poor, man. He could turn it around in the blink of an eye, right? Because that's what power we serve, man. Right? There's nothing too far-fetched that the Most High can't do for us, right? It says, and upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor, man. Right? Read. Verse 6, bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong, and do nothing at all by injurious practice. Does, does the leader of, of this country do that? Right? The leader of this country, Esau Edom, he hates somebody for every wrong that they do, man. Every wrong that they do, he hold it against them. He hold grudges, right? But the most I say, don't hate your neighbor for every reason, man. Read. And do nothing at all by injurious practice. And do nothing at all by injurious practices, man. Right? Do nothing at all by injurious practice. When the police pull you over, they first thought in their head, I'm finna kill this nigga, man. That's their first thought. They don't want to see your license and registrations. They want to know. They don't want to know your name. They just want to see you in a body bag. They want to see you bleeding, man. Right? Because they love blood. Right? You're not supposed to partake in injurious practices. Right? But they do it all the day long. Read. Verse 7. Pride is hateful before Yahweh and man. And by both doeth one commit iniquity. 
Pride is hateful by the most high and man. As men, we hate to see a pride, a prideful person, man. Can't tell them nothing, right? Cocky, arrogant, right? Won't humble down. They act like they not flesh and blood like you, right? They act like they don't eat, sleep, breathe, piss, you know, like you do, man. They act like they better than you, like the Most High gave them a whole different vessel and a whole different spirit, and y'all ain't on the same level, man. Pride is hateful before the Most High handbanger, right? The Most High hates pride. And you can't come to the Most High with a prideful heart. You have to be humble to see the face of God, man. Right? He chose. He has chosen the meek out the earth because the meek is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, not the prideful. Right? And, the, and our enemies, Esau, Edom, Edom, he is the most hateful forsaker of the most high, man, because of his pride. Right? And a lot of our brothers and sisters follow that devil, man. They, they got pride just like that devil. It ain't got a damn thing, man. Right? It's saying by both do one commit iniquity, man. Right? You commit iniquity because of your pride. Pride will lead you to destruction. Right? Pride is going to get a lot of our brothers and sisters killed in these last days. And that's why this country is falling too, man. Right? Because of unjust dealing. Because of his pride. Right? They used to say to own a home is the American dream. Right? To own a home is the American dream. Right? But now they saying to own a home is, a, is the American nightmare, man. Because the bank's robbing you and ripping you off. The, the bank's been giving loans to people, to their own people, right? The banks will give their people a loan knowing that their people can't pay the loan back, right? They've been giving people loans knowing that they can't pay the loan back. So when they get a foreclosure on their house, the bank get, you know, get the rest of the money, man. And, and the people lose. The banks win and the people lose. Right? That's why owning a home in America right now is the uh, uh, American nightmare. It's not the American dream, man. Number trailers, man. And then you, it got some parts of LA, all you see is tents on the sidewalk, man. People living in their tents and they enjoy life better because they ain't even got to worry about no bills or nothing. Some people are happy to live on the sidewalk in a tent because they not stressed out being raped, robbed, and murdered by the goddamn banking system, man. Right? Let me get the book uh, 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 Book of Ecclesiasticus, verse 10, cha uh, chapter 10, verse 8. Because the, of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and rich got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one to people to another. Right, so because of all the unjust dealings that go on here in Babylon, dealing with the so-called white man and his crooked ways, right? And, and murders, right? Unfair trial, you got brothers sitting in jail for 30 years, they ain't even, they ain't even commit the damn crime, man. They ain't even have no evidence on them and they locked them up, right? Because of unjust dealings and riches got by deceit. Riches got by lies, man. The banking system was finessing the whole time. The whole time, since it was created by the Rothschilds, right? The banking system have been getting riches by deceit, right? Therefore, the kingdom is gonna be translated from them to us, man, from one people to another. The kingdom gotta be translated. Or else artificial intelligence gonna kill everybody like the Terminator movie, man. You know what I'm saying? Artificial intelligence gonna go crazy out here if the kingdom not translated, man. Right? Bring that out. It's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right, so Esau, Edom, is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows, right? So when we set our face against Mount Seir, right, which is America to prophesize against it, we let you know that, hey, man, your rulership is over with, man. And our rulership is up next. 
right? But Esau don't want to give up that power, man. He's not going out without a fight. If he can't have the kingdom, in his heart, his mind, he feel like nobody can't have the kingdom. Right? So he ready to go to war with any and everybody and ready to kill as many people as possible before he lose his power. Right? Next verse. Verse 11. Uh, Salakia. Verse 9. What is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such, uh, for such an one setteth his own soul to sell. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his vows. Salakia. Why is the earth and ashes proud, right? Why is earth and ashes proud? What is earth and ashes, right? How can earth and ashes be proud? What is earth and ashes? Let me get that, King. Genesis uh, 18 and 27. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am which am but dust and ashes. Abraham say he is nothing but earth and ashes, man. Right? So Abraham was earth and ashes. You Israelites are earth and ashes, right? That's all we are. We are earth and ashes. Earth and ashes. The most I say, why is the earth and ashes so damn proud? Right? Why you Negroes so proud? Right? You rappers, you entertainers, you musicians, Right? You, you damn uh, sports players. Why y'all so damn proud, man? Because you got millions of dollars? That's why you proud? Because you don't put some new rims on your damn beat up Chevy and then got it spray painted and then got the guts dead, right? So now you proud? You feel you better than your brothers and sisters now? Right? Because you done hit a little lick for 30 bands, 50 bands. Now you can go to the strip club and flex. And throw money, now you proud? Why you so damn proud? Right? We don't we don't understand. Like how y'all so proud? We don't own nothing, man. We don't own nothing. Right? We don't own these Fortune 500 companies. Right? We don't have no grocery stores that's owned by our people. Right? I can't go to my own people in hunger and thirst and nakedness. Right? Why y'all so damn proud? Read that again from the top, King. The book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one sendeth his own soul to sell. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his vows. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, right? It don't get no more wicked than that, man. A man that's covetous, that won't, that wants greatly something that belongs to somebody else, man. Right? That wants greatly that belongs to somebody else. Right? There's nothing more wicked than a covetous man, right? A covetous man will sell his soul just to have something that somebody else got, man. Right? A lot of you, a lot of you uh, uh, young kids, y'all look up to Lil Uzi Vert. Y'all look up to damn Lil Wayne. Y'all look up to all these entertainers, right? Because you see a lifestyle that they portraying on TV that they don't really live, right? They portraying a certain lifestyle and you think they live in a certain way and you want that so bad, you're willing to kill your brother for it, to get it. You're willing to rob your brothers and sisters to get it, right? Anybody in your path, you're willing to, you're willing to destroy them to get it, man. You, you are even willing to cast away your vows, man. You're willing to let another man pop you up the ass, right, for a record deal. So you can get that damn car that damn Yo Gotti driving, right? So you can get that car that damn Young Thug got, man, right? You're willing to cast away your vows and sell your own damn soul 
to have a, a fabricated lifestyle. Uh, you know we didn't enjoy much. Uh, somebody get me uh, Somebody bring out Isaiah 51 at 20. Perfect example of what these brothers are doing right here. Come on. Isaiah what, King? 51, 51, 21 and 20. Bring it out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thy sons have faded. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of fury of the Lord, the rebuke of that God. Uh, yeah, they wild bulls, man. Our, our people are wild bulls on the street, man. Just like just like when I seen a clip on uh, on YouTube with Spring Break out there in Miami. All our people is out there fighting. You know what I'm saying? Trying to party. Women out there twerking like wild boys on the street, man. Right? That's all our people are. Rebellious and wicked, man. Folly is said in great dignity. Folly is said in great dignity. Huh? But there's nothing more wicked than a covetous man. And, and our people get all that covetousness from that damn devil, Esau Edom, man. Right? They get all that covetousness from Esau Edom. Bring this out, King. The book of Akkad, chapter 2, verse 2. And they cover fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. You see, them devils, they covet fields and take them by violence. The most I say, there is nothing more wicked than a covetous man. Because he will kill you to take what you have because he wanted more than you do, right? You worked for it, you earned it, right? This man done went in with the sword and done took everything you had because he wanted it better than you do, right? There's nothing more wicked than a covetous man. Esau covered after our women. He covered after our, our power, right? He covered after our, our, our music skills, right? Our talent, right? He covered out for everything, man. He want the whole damn world. He lusting after the whole world, man. He a culture vulture. He want to be like every culture on the damn planet, man. He's a fugitive and a vagabond, right? Let me get uh, Mark 8 and 36. Everybody said she loved the devil. Yeah, they love the devil because that's their damn daddy, man. They love their daddy. They openly worship Satan. It, it, it ain't a secret, man. She's walking with a uh, Eve, too. Who that? She's walking with an Eve. Uh, she saw. She might say she loved the devil. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's her daddy, man. She is of her father, the devil. And the lust of her father, she will do. You know? Bring that out, King. This is the book of Mark. Chapter 8, verse 36. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose your soul, man? Right? What does it profit man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Esau Edom done gained the whole world. Right? The so called white man. He run the whole earth, man. The earth was given into his hand. He gained the whole world. But guess what? He done lost his damn soul, man. Right? Bring that out in uh, Job 9 and 24. <laughs> the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered up the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right. So the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, right? The most I say, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul, right? Or what shall it be uh, in exchange for his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul, right? You're going to cast away your bowels. You're going to completely do away with your morals, man. You're going to be a homosexual, right? You're going to be a man that lay with another man for riches. A male prostitute, man. What? Wait, wait, wait. But you gonna you gonna get what? A few hundred thousand dollars, maybe a couple million dollars. Now what? Now you dead on the inside, man. 
Now the most high is against you. Right? Now you at odds with your creator. Right? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What did Esau Edom give, man? He gave hell on earth. Complete disobedience to the laws of God to gain the world. The same way Satan tempted our Lord Yahweh he said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this, man. Right? What, what you gonna gain by bowing down to Satan? Not a damn thing, man. You gonna get death and destruction. And you gonna get torments and pain after death. That's what you gonna get. Right? Let me get Matthew 16 and 24. Again. Right? Just to elaborate on it a little bit. And let me get 2nd Edges chapter 9 and verse 9. Of the show. Right? What shall it gain a man to gain the world and lose his, his, his soul, man? A covetous man want to gain the whole world. Right? A covetous man wants to gain the whole world and wickedness. Right? Because we want to gain the world. We want our rulership back. But we want it done in righteousness. We, we finna earn it. We ain't finna just take it. Right? We finna earn our position of power. And it's going to be respected for centuries the way we earn our, our position of power, man. Y'all are disgraced. Y'all are ashamed of y'all history. Y'all don't even want y'all history taught in schools no more. Because it's so damn shameful, man. It's a shameful history of perpetual rape, rob, and murder. Now you want to ban black history from schools, man. Right? Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Right. So if any man want to wanna, uh, follow Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, you're going to deny yourself, man. You're going to take up your cross. Right? You're going to carry your burdens and earn your position in the kingdom of heaven. Right? You're going to earn rulership by denying yourself, by putting the, the, the benefits of your nation first, man. Right? You're going to put your nation first above yourself. Right? And that's how we're going to obtain rulership. That's how we're going to obtain power again in decency and order. We're going to deny ourselves and take up our burdens and follow Hamashiach and Habashah into the kingdom. Right? We're going to deny ourselves. It's hard for a prideful man or woman to deny themselves, man. They always thinking about them. Oh, what this going to do for me? How is this going to benefit me? What do I get out of this? Right? Because they only concerned about themselves. What do the nation get out of this, man? Of my daily sacrifices that I make to abstain from unclean foods, to, ab to abstain from witches and warlocks and, and, and whores and harlots, what is going to benefit our nation by me doing that, man? Right? It's, it's going to benefit because the Most High ain't going to have to judge our nation off of my mess ups. Right? The Most High not going to have to judge our nation off of my mess ups, man. That's how it's going to benefit. If I have an evil eye towards my brother, if I'm lusting after what my brother got and, and, and go destroy my brother, that's not beneficial to your nation. It's not beneficial to our nation, man, to go kill my brother because I want what he got, right? That's not beneficial. By me sacrificing and obeying the commandments, that's going to benefit our nation, right? That gives my brothers a chance to get right, right? To not live in fear of their own people, man. Some of our people are scared of their own people, right? Oh, I can't go this way. I can't go this way today. Them niggas, them niggas going to get me, right? Because they scared of their own people. It don't benefit our nation, man. The other nations are supposed to fear us, right? We're not supposed to fear each other. we only supposed to fear the most high. Read. Nah. It's lucky. Book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, shall find it. Look at that devil, man. That, that's, that's Satan. That's Satan. That's Satan in the flesh. Your kingdom is over with, devil. Right? Whoever shall lose his life shall find it, man. Right? 
and we done lost our lives, man. When I woke up to this truth, it felt like I died. You know what I'm saying? It felt like I died, man. We lost our life in order to gain this whole world, man. The, way, the life that we once knew, that's what we lost, right? All, all, all we knew was pimping, right? Drug, drug abuse, lying, flexing, pretending to be something that you're not, right? Just to prove yourself to other people. We lost that life, man. And now we done gained a whole new life that's way better than that old life that we was living, man. Whoever shall lose his life shall find it, right? And it say, whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You gotta let go of those earthly possessions, those things that you depend on heavily, man, right? Like drugs, like a, like a damn blunt. Our people get high every damn day, all day, man. They depend on that more than they depend on the most high. We don't need escapisms, negative escapisms, like getting high to escape reality, man. A lot of our people, they getting high on cocaine right now, and that's gonna be their last bag tonight, man. Cause that bag laced with fentanyl, right? It's their last bag. And I can attest to it, man. I done lost people that done died to that fentanyl, man. Thinking that they just, Hitting a bump of coke, but it's some damn bad dope. And what the hell the devil, Satan, why the hell you make a, a drug that strong any damn way? Who, who makes a drug that strong where, where if you do it, you'll, you'll die? Right? Nobody but the devil, man, so called white man. Right? He tried to say Issachar was bringing that dope in, you know, but we know who they got the formula from. We know who the recipe came from, man. We learn from our oppressors. And they didn't expect us to learn the wickedness that we learned from them and to be good at it, right? Our people good at being evil as hell, man. Sad to say it, but our people good at being evil, right? Our people openly worship Satan. They openly worship the so-called white man, openly. You better not say nothing about Massa, man. You better not say nothing about Massa. Not my master, not my ma not my Jesus, right? You can't even say nothing about master without them, you know, jumping in front of the bullet, man. They ready to die for master, right? Bring that out, King. Book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right. What shall it profit once again to gain the world and lose your soul, man? It don't profit a damn thing. Eternal torments. Eter torments for eternity. That's what you're going to get. Because it ain't even your soul to sell in the first damn pay in the place. Right? You didn't create your soul. You didn't give yourself your soul, man. It ain't even your soul to sell. So how the hell you try? That's like you trying to sell a rental car, man. You trying to sell a damn rent. You done rented the car. Now you acting like it's yours and you trying to sell it now. It, it don't work like that. That's just stupidity you trying to sell something that's not even yours. And, and our people selling their soul every day. Or think they selling their soul or trying to sell their soul. You can't sell something that belongs to the most high. Right? And with that, I'd like to give all praise and glory to you. How about you? By Shem Yahweh Shah. I'm going to let the, the next uh, mighty speaker come on. Shalom. Ka! The brother Kadash is mighty in the spirit, man. Like we got to come out of Babylon, man. Like we got these brothers right here in the corner that just hanging out, throwing up gate sides for no reason, man. But they supposed to be out here preaching the word, man, going against the other nations, but they've been doing gang sides and twerking and dancing for the last three hours, man. What's the purpose, man? You go ahead and give me that folly and set of great dignity, man. People love folly, man. They live by folly, man. That's all our people do, man. 
They want to sit on the head of the street like the brother broke out in Isaiah 51. They, they want to sit on the head of the corner, man, like wild beasts and animals, man. Brothers are throwing up gay signs for no reason, drinking. Well, what's the purpose, man? You know, the, the most high don't want you doing that. The most high say, be fruitful. Go teach your people, man. You ain't supposed to be out here throwing gay signs and listen to the rap music. The rap, man, the rap is over with, man. The most high's killing these rappers, man. You guys gotta understand, man. The most high don't like rap like that, man. Yeah, follow your set of great dignity. What, 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 what precept is that? Yeah, Folly said, just type in Folly said, great things, and you'll come up. Just Google it. Our people love Folly, man. You guys gotta understand, man. You guys gotta come out of this Folly. Start knowing who you are, man. Bang on the other nations, man. That's what these brothers should be doing. Bang on the other nations, not throwing gay signs at each other, man. The gangs are scary, man. These gangs will run for the police, man. Trust me, I've been in that stuff since 88, man. As soon as the police came on the block, man, they run, man. You got it, King? Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 6. Bring it Folly up. is set in great dignity. Read that again. Folly is set in great dignity. What is these brothers doing on the corner right here with this music? Folly is set in great dignity. Folly is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in low place. And you are the rich, man. You sit in low places, man. For the last two hours, man, these brothers been playing music. For what, man? Don't wait game size, man. I've been watching them the whole time, man. And for what, man? You guys supposed to be building of nations, man. You're supposed to be out there with your kids out in a corner of Hollywood. So we're telling you guys come out of your folly, man. Get back to the law, statute, and commandments, man. Because gangs have no power, man. I can tell you that right now. Either you're a crip or a blood, you have no power in this kingdom, man. These so will still lock you up, man. They don't care if you claim it. Crip or blood. Or uh, uh, south side, Southsiders, man. With the the so-called uh, Escort tribes, man. They have no power, man. The biggest gang on the street is the Sheriff's Department, the LAPD, man. Uh, uh, Those are the real gangs, man. And they're going to profit by putting you in jail, man. So we got to be grown men, man. And respect each other, and, man. Start coming back to our laws and to the commandments, man. Because the Most High put a curse upon us, man. Somebody go ahead and say, uh, give me that uh, verse, that I shall be evil to, to your brother, man. You got that? Your eyes shall be evil to your brother. Oh, that's good. Deuteronomy, yeah, Deuteronomy. Good old Deuteronomy, the curses, man. Did you guys check out? Did you guys see this on Instagram or Facebook? It went viral that an Eve killed her husband because he wouldn't spend time at the house. So she went ahead and was arguing with him, pulled out a gun, and blew his head off, man. A sister, man. It's all over the news, man. Look it up, man. She literally was arguing with her, man. Kadash, did you hear? Did you hear that about that about that Eve that blew that um Jake's head off on Facebook Live? Yeah, in Mississippi. In Mississippi, man. The girl was arguing with her rib. I mean, uh, the the uh, he was arguing with his rib. The rib pulled out a gun for no reason. He didn't threaten her. He just said, "Hey, get out my face! I don't want to talk right now." She gets on a uh, Facebook Live and was on the phone with her mother, and she pulled a gun out, man, and the gun went off, man. Yeah. Go ahead, get that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. Bring it out. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. And vice versa. And toward the remnant of his children. And the women, uh, and women of his children, man. She done that in front of the children. When she shot him, you can hear the kids in the background say, Daddy, Daddy. Yeah. Blew his blades out. He's dead, man. 
But you guys still want to be out here on Hollywood Boulevard, walking up down the street, not realizing the most high have a judgment. You're under these curses, man. You're not out here for entertainment purposes, man. We're not here to sing and dance and cut a jig with you, man. We out here giving you a warning. We're out here to tell you you're sitting in the last days of the most high, man. It's the last days of the of this, of this kingdom, man. And repent, man. Come back to this truth, man. We don't have time to throw up no gate signs. We don't have time to be listening to music and dancing. Because you're living in the last days, man. All that gay stuff is played out anyways. Nobody even hardly gay bag anymore, man. So I don't understand why these brothers on the corner gay throwing gay signs. They don't have the power to do anything against LAPD or the sheriff, man. But these are the curses, man. Give me Jeremiah uh, 422, please. So you guys gotta understand, man. This is the last day, man. People are dying left and right, man. That's why we telling you guys to repent, man. You never know when the Most High is gonna uh, take your life for the wickedness that you do on this uh, so-called kingdom, man. Got it, King? Go ahead, King. The book of Jeremiah, chapter four, verse 22. Bring it out. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are astonished children. So I should be stupid. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. They have no dodge of doing good, man. All you want to do is party and bullshit, like Biggie said in 94. Party and bullshit and party. That's what we want to do, man. Right. Bring it up. Or smoke weed and stuff like that, man. All that stuff is coming to the end, man. Ain't gonna be no weed smoke smoking in the kingdom of heaven. Ain't gonna be no seed walking. Ain't gonna be no gain signs in the kingdom of heaven, man. All that stuff is coming to the end, man. The most high is not gonna let you bring your wickedness into the kingdom, man. You're gonna burn up in nuclear fire, man. Right now, everybody's turning against the United States, man. China's gearing up. North Korea, man. The dollar um, is uh, collapsing, man. Banks is failing, man. You guys know about that bank it's, uh, in, uh, uh, what's that, in that valley? Uh, Silicon, valley. Silicon Valley. The water, okay? Silicon Valley, man. That's going to be other banks that's going to follow suit, man. Because the, the most high is going to deal with the economy. How you doing, sister? You know you're an Israelite, man. Go ahead and get it together, sister. Go ahead. Follow the law, set your commandments, sis. That's right. That's right. Take those pants off, though, sis, and put on a dress. Dress modest. God, God. So we want you guys to come back, man, to your heritage, man. Don't follow the heathen custom, man. That's why we're in trouble right now with the Most High, man. We follow all these customs, man. Like these brothers right here in the court, they should be up here with us teaching the word. We don't got time for all this folly, man. Well, that's our people, man. What do you expect, man, for our lost people, man? Uh, give me Hosea uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. So you guys got to understand, man, the most high is not playing with our people, man. You black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, India, okay? We got we to do better, man. We just got to do better and come back to the work. Go ahead, King. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For the Lord uh, hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God and the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore, shall the land mourn, and every one of or every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. Ah, that's it. So it's no, it's, it's this loneliness in this kingdom, man. Nobody has any uh, 
sense of value, man. No pride about themselves, man. Everybody just want to do whatever they want. They, they, they got that YOLO spirit, man. You only live once. So we try to tell you to come out of that spirit, man. It's going to lead to death and destruction. And you brothers need to get out here and get with your own nation, man. Stop dealing with Esau and these other women, man. Because they're going to lead you to death and destruction. You see that brother that uh, done that Creed 3 movie, man? He down there got his career tucking off. What is that, Jonathan Majors? Dealing with that Edomite woman. The Edomite woman lied and said that uh, that she he, he uh, hit her or something like that. And uh, they down there want to uh, cancel his contract, man. He got two big movies out right now, the Ant-Man and uh, Creed 3. So you're not supposed to be with these white women, man. They're the devil, man. That's right, that's right. That's why you ain't supposed to be with them with your skinny jeans on trying to be tough, looking feminine. That's right, I said it. That's why you got that feminine spirit with those skinny jeans telling me to shut my ass up. But you got skinny jeans on. Try to be looking all feminine, man, with those pink shoes. The, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel, what you are, what you are. Ain't no fake, man. You need to read more, man. You need to read more, man. And come back to the law, that's your commandments, man. Don't be out here being feminine, man, with skinny jeans on and with those ugly ass dress ball jeans called Jeezy's. But you don't wanna you don't wanna you don't wanna listen, man. You don't wanna listen. You wanna be full of folly and death and destruction gonna come to you. With the LAPD or the sheriff gun you down, don't say we didn't warn you. With the LAPD or the sheriff gun you down, don't say we didn't warn you. Come back to the law that you commandments. Stop being with these skinny G spirit. Talking about we racist. We for our people. We out here for you, brother. But you don't want to hear it. Our people love folly. He talking about shit my racist ass up. The white man been racist to you for almost 400 years. Hold your asses on a tree. Feed your babies to alligators. And I'm racist? You damn right. I'm for my people. The white man been killing you for years. But you want to love to your oppressor, he gonna go ahead and kill you anyways. Damn cool. That's what's wrong with our people, man. They love folly. Man told me to shut my ass up wearing skinny jeans with pink shoes on. Did you get that, Kadash? <laughs> you know, you want to walk up Hollywood Boulevard. What's, what's on Hollywood Boulevard but nothing but folly, man? Nothing, man. Nothing is out here, man. We got this brother right here, dad there in his 40s. He been playing his music for almost two hours. For what reason, man? He flossing his movie music for nothing, man. He need to be out here knowing that he's an Israelite. Teaching his kids, man, but he just want to hang on the corner, man. Your youth is past, brother. I know you dad there in your 40s, man. What are you doing with a hot that with, with beat in it, man? Man, come on, brother. I know you gotta be at least in your forties still trying to hang out, man, like you're a youngster, man. But that's where our people are, man. That's Scottish kids, man. Right. I got beat in my car. You don't see me out here blasting. I got three fifteens in my truck right now. That's way louder than his. You don't see me out here blasting music. So I'm out here teaching the Bible, telling you that you the lost twelve tribes of Israel, man. We don't got time for folly out here. But you guys love folly, man. You guys want to see uh, women twerk, man. It's this girl twerking for almost three hours on the same song, man. That's it, That's it man. That's just crazy, man. We got the brother going gay signs, and it's just, it's just madness out here, man. You guys gotta understand, man. Nothing but death is coming to you guys, man. We out here to give you a warning. Like a siren, man, on the police car. Or a siren on the fire truck, man. You only got a short time, man. This kid is gonna be burnt up in nuclear fire, man. 
Brother with the hot dog, man. Let me talk to you for a minute, brother. Brother with the hot dog, man. Look, now that's slot boxing, man. That's our people, man. They love folly, man. Man, they out here for two hours not accomplishing anything, man. Just want to hang out, man. And brother, you got to get out of that feminist spirit, man. Come on, man. He's switching it. Oh, my goodness, man. Got that son of my spirit on him, man. Golly, man. Anybody got a preset? Give me a Matthew 23 and 34. That's why the Most High has started to wake up the prophets, man. To teach you guys some law and order, man. Who got it? And whoever want to bring something out, I'll find the verse. Yeah, Matthew uh, 23, 34, man. Go ahead, Kay. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 34. Therefore, behold, I sent unto your, uh, your prophets and wise men, and for the most high prophets and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. So we might get killed one day for bringing out this word, man. And some of them shall you scorn in your synagogues and persecute. That's what you guys do. You guys scoffers and persecutors up here. From city to city. From city to city, man. And the Israelites is in every city, man. The Most High is waking us up, man. We're in every major city in America right now, man. So you guys gotta understand that, man. We're not out here to bring attention to ourselves, man. We out here to tell you guys, the end is coming, man. <coughs> this kid is gonna be burnt up, man. It's gonna be it, man. Ain't gonna be nothing but a desolate place, man. Full of ash, a tumbleweed, man. But you guys don't wanna listen to us. We're the crazy men. We're racist. You know what I mean? But when you guys see that sky crack over those UFOs, man, it's gonna be too late, man. You guys gonna be burnt up, man. But it's your choice, man. We, you can't say that you was at war, man. Like the scripture saying, he sent prophets and scribes and everybody around the city to warn everybody, man. It's like in the days of Noah, man. Most High is going to destroy this kingdom, not by water, but this time by fire, man. That's why we tell you blacks, Hispanics, Native American, Seminole, Indian, man, to get it back together, man. You know, to, uh, on Monday, we're going to be celebrating Passover, where the death angel passed us over, man. We destroyed the, um, our, our enemies, man, which is uh, the Egyptians, man. We're at Passover season right now. So we telling you guys to come back to your Lord and your kingdom, man. You black suspect that over consider an Indian, man. This is Passover season, man. We're supposed to be giving tribute for the angels killing our enemies, man. When he broke you out of bondage, out of Egypt, man. But you guys don't want to listen to us, man. We're crazy. We're racist. Telling you guys, you guys are the chosen people of the Most High God. You guys are the real Jews. You're not African American. You're not Mexican. You guys are the, the lost twelve tribes of Israel, man. And come back to your Lord, God, the God of Israel, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. And get out of this folly, man. But you guys don't want to do it. You guys wanna walk it, walk up down the street, see what y'all get into, get drunk, high. But it's all coming to the end, man. Joy why is here, man. Because the white man's kingdom is coming down. All the rape, robbery, it's still in the land. That's why I said it. The white man's kingdom is coming down. The most high is gonna destroy it in fire. You only got a short time, man. 
Give me that first the devil only got a short tie. They only got a short tie, man. They're gonna try to take everybody down with them, man. You gotta understand that, man. The Israelites were so called dark skinned people, what they call today Negroes or African American. It's not those white, pale, red skinned, like this man right here in Israel claiming to be you. They're imposters. They was put in that land in 1948, man, under the British mandate. You guys gotta understand that, man. They stole your identity. There's a part of the slave trade. They find that's the slave tra uh, ships. But if you say that to them and you tell the truth and you bring out evidence, they'll call you anti-Semitic. But wait a minute, how can we be anti-Semitic when we come from the line of Shia? I can't be anti myself. But this is how the people control the media the newspaper and make you seem like you're a Gentile when they're Gentiles. God. When Christ come back, when we know as Yahweh shall, he's going to reveal all the lies. He's going to take all the lies away, man. And the other nations going to serve us just like we had to serve them for our transgression. Got a king? It's the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Bring it out. Therefore rejoice. Ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. You know you only got a short time to rule this kingdom, sir? You only got a short time. You white people going to be put in slavery for all the rape and robbery and all the stealing of the land and what you done to my Native American brothers. So you only got a short time to rule. So enjoy Hollywood Boulevard while you can. Cause you only got a short time. That's right, I said it. You devils only got a short time. Cause a big black man that Yahweh Shah, what you guys know is Jesus Christ, is gonna come back and slay. Matter of fact, give me what uh Yahweh Shah, give me uh give me the uh the uh, uh revelations uh one and thirteen. Somebody give me what Jesus Christ really looked like. And tell me why he don't look like this man right here. So we know somebody's lying right here. They lie about this image about what Christ looked like. What else has a white man lied about? He's a natural liar. No truth in this man. You give me John of 8 and 44. Revelations chapter 1 verse 13. Break it out. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man clothed in a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden garden with a golden girdle his head and his hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters does that look like does that describe this this man right here this pale dog hair fellow named Cesar Borgia. Can I describe him? So they painted the image, they painted their likeness and image in their image. The heathen has sought to paint the image of their, uh, of our gods and our saints in their image. Go ahead, Dave. 844. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He, uh, he was a murderer from the beginning and abhorred not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Woo, you dropped the mic right there. He's a father of lies. And what does he do with the father of lies? How do you spread his propaganda? Through his news propagation. His radio, his media. You call him a liar, he call you anti-Semitic. Are you a hate bugger? Are you a conspiracy theorist? Or what they call it, conspiracy or theorist or whatever? They 
Jake's trying to bring his truth out back because he want to hide who he is. The most high called his name Esau or Adubia. He's Jacob's twin brother, man. Somebody give me Genesis, man. Break down Esau, who he is, man. You guys know what I want. You guys know what I want. Genesis 25, go ahead, bring it out. This man is, is, a, is a bag of bar, man. He's wanted by all countries, man. He's the most wanted man on the planet, Esau. That's why he spent billions and billions and trillions on uh, weapons and nuclear arms and stuff, man. Because his numbers is only less than, less than, uh, a, they don't even have four, <coughs> Esau don't even have a billion people on the planet, man, of his race, man. He's less than uh, 500 million people, uh, Edomites on the planet, man. He knows that. We, out, we outnumber him 11 to 1, man. That's why he got all these nuclear missiles, cruise missiles, and whatever he get his hands on, man. Because he know he's hated on the planet, man. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 22. Break it out. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Now check that out, man. He said, two nations in thy womb. And two manners of people. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Now we know who's stronger, physically and mentally. What other race that you know that could bear through, we bear through, and still, still persevering, man? Still here, man. No other race on the whole face of this planet could do what we done, been through what we been through and still keep our head up. That's right. Keep driving, keep making babies. Go ahead, Kate, bring it out. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So twins was in a row. In a, in a wolf. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. The Most High called him red, like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And he called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took a hold of Esau's hill. And his name was called Jacob. It was called Jacob. We grabbed on Esau's hill in the womb. That's a symbolic said that we're going to bring him down in the last day. When Christ and the angel come back, that said his rulership is over with, man. Did you know that so-called white man that your kingdom is coming to an end? Your banks is failing. All the other nations is turning against you. So you're coming down, Esau. So enjoy it while you love it. Enjoy it while it lasts, Esau, because you're coming down. You're going to have to be living like us pretty soon. That's your biggest problem. I don't want to live like those niggers. <laughs> but it's going to happen, man. You guys going to live worse than us, actually. It's going to come down, man. Go ahead, King. Finish it up. And Isaac was three score years when she bare them. And the boards grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man. Man, who cuts? This right here is describing the so-called white man. What does the white man like to do? He likes to hunt and kill innocent animals. This is the only man that I know that can hunt a whale. A whale? Why would you want to hunt a whale? <laughs> but this is man, this lets you know he's a hunter, man. And Jacob was a play man, man. So you brothers gotta get it together, young man. You guys are the Israelites, despite if you guys think it's bull crap. Because you guys only got a short time, man. So you guys got it together. You guys are the lost 12 tribes of Israel, man. And this kingdom's coming down, man. You see what happened to our dudes with that uh, 
that homosexual went on a bad shooting spree at the school, man. The trainee sexuals, man. Now they're going crazy, man. So there's nothing but confusion in this kingdom, man. It could be non-binary, gay. You can feel you can be any gender you want. It's nothing but confusion, but the both sides gonna turn the LBGTQ against you guys. And I love it, man. There's nothing but confusion, man. A man shall not lay with a man, and a woman shall not lay with a woman. But the so-called white man says it's okay in this kingdom. Because he's an evildoer, man. That's why we rebuke in this kingdom, man. And we want it to be destroyed, man. Because the whole earth is going to rejoice when this man's out of power. It's nothing but confusion while this man is in power, man. He raped, he robbed, he stole all your resources. He took all your artifacts, man. And he's still passing all his wealth to his kids, man. But he want to call you the thug. He want to call you the criminal. This man got so many criminal charges against him. The Bible says his, his sins is stacked up to the boat, uh, to the heavens, man. He felt your kiss to alligators, man. But you the thug, man. But you don't own nothing. You don't you don't own any gun gun manufacturers. You don't have any way to import these guns that come over here on these shores. You don't have any cruise liner ships or any of uh, those freight liner ships. So-called white man bringing all the guns and drugs in your neighborhood, man. That's right. Remember what happened in the 80s, the CIA put crack cocaine under Ronald Reagan to find that, that, uh, that war in, uh, what was it, Nicaragua? I can't remember. Oh, Nicaragua. You know, yeah, there you go. The Contra, there you go, the Contras. So this was the bad dude, man. He didn't push it in his neighborhood. But the most high reversed it on a so-called Esau. Now it's a, a fitno uh, e e epidemic right now, an opio. So the most high reversed it on there, man. So the most high is a mastermind. What you done to us, he's slowly doing it to you guys now. If you guys look at on uh, the news now, your homes is uh, being destroyed by mudslides and sinkholes. That's the most high, man. Most eyes destroy Esau's kingdom slowly. Mudslides, sea codes. Got your trainees going on a bad shooting at the school, man. The most eyes are starting to mock the uh, Esau now, man. He's bringing out Esau slowly. For slowly. For shizzle, my dizzle. You guys want to still be out here dancing? Everything's all good because I can play my music. But that's our people, man. They love folly, man. They love being entertained, man. My goodness, man. Our people got to get together with a slap box and. Whew. It's a shame, man. It's all coming to an end, man. When nation become, when nation goes against nation, man. Somebody get that when it says nation against nation. When the most sides gonna turn nation against nation, it's gonna be too late, man. What you guys gonna do with these race wars pop off, man? Are you gonna say we racist then? Where's those skinny G guys at? Was it be nation against nation? Are we are we gonna be racist then? Uh huh. It's gonna happen, man. Every nation's gonna cling on to its old nation, man. Ain't gonna be no kumbaya in the last day, man. When the resources is gone, we ain't gonna be able to go to Rouse or Vods or any of those supermarkets that you guys like to do. It's gonna be resources. It's gonna be you guys gonna be fighting over resources, man. Food and water, man. Ain't gonna be no more silly dancing like this, right? The Book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four, verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation, 
and kingdom against kingdom. It will be kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. And there shall be famines. Famine. And pestilence. Pestilence. And earthquakes. Earthquakes. In diverse places. In diverse places. Check that out. They're the, the both sides of bastard by man. And that's pretty much what's happening in this kingdom right now. Ain't gonna be no ice cream licking in the kingdom of heaven anymore. You guys walking and enjoying this kingdom. It's gonna be death and, pa and famine, man. You ain't gonna be able to lick on no ice cream. <coughs> ain't gonna be no pizza slices. You're gonna be fighting for food, man, to stay alive, man. I'm like gonna tell you, you guys better come back, man. It's gonna be nation to get stationed, man. You ain't gonna be worried about no music come out of no Honda Accord. It's gonna be it, man. You ain't gonna be worried about no gain signs. We, we, your belly is rumbling, man. And you ain't ate for three or four days, man. It's gonna be serious, man. Can you imagine not having no food for about a week? And no, no, no. You can flip me off all you want, man. But that doesn't matter, man. <laughs> At least get you a fine looking woman if you go floss, brother. Man, golly, you got a will on your arm, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> but that's how it is, man. Our brothers, our brothers want to be, our brothers want to turn against each other, man. You guys got to get it together, man. All that gay bag ain't going to do nothing for you, brother. No, our brother, hey, brother, 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 brother. All that gay bag ain't... All, all that game bang ain't gonna work, brother. All that game bang ain't gonna work. We we been up to the Lord, man. Fight the white man. Go fight the white man. Go fight the white man that that, that lock you up. So you ain't gonna turn against the white man. You ain't gonna turn against the LAPD, but you wanna bang on your brother. Go, 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 go bang on the LAPD. Go bang on the LAPD. So he got bad when I talk about his little white woman, but that's all our people, man. They wanna be cools. As soon as the white woman, you talk about the little white woman that that destroyed you and raped and robbed your your family, you get bad. But that's our people, man. That's our people, man. That's our people. Don't don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Go get to LAPD. Go get to LAPD. You gonna do all that about a white woman, man? You gonna do all that against a white woman, man? But that's how our people are, man. They want cake for a white. Ooh, man. That's how our people are, man. They want to defend the white man when he raped and robbed and killed your ass in slavery. You dumb nigga. And you going, you going with their daughters and shit, man. At least be with your own people. Bang on the LAPD. Bang on the sheriff. Stop be out here dancing and acting a fool. I guarantee you he wouldn't do that to the LAPD. But that's our people, man. Give me up, Gerard, chapter 2843, man. If you give me Gerard, 2854. Give me uh, uh, Deuteronomy 2854. Go ahead. This adore him, man. This adore him. He ain't gonna do nothing. Adore him. This adore him. As long as he don't run up, this adore him. Go ahead, King. You got it? Okay, we be that. Do that to the LAPD. Do that to the LAPD. Look at that. Look at that. Running like a, throwing stuff like a woman, man. Throw stuff like a woman, man. Cause you want to defend your white woman. Go ahead. Give me Deuteronomy 2854. We ain't scared up here. We ain't scared. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't scared of you. That's what's wrong with our people. Go ahead, man. Keep point, uh, Corinth, watch these brothers, man. Cause they drunk and they been dancing all day. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. So that a man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. And who's this brother right here? His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Now he's evil towards me, and I'm not locking you up. 
I ain't never locked you up in my life. I don't come in your neighborhood and throw cups on you. But her day, shit, the people do. You with the oppressor, brother. Come out, get somebody with your own, your own, your own, your own people, man. That don't mean nothing to me, homie. That don't mean nothing to me, brother. I'm an OG myself, homie. Ten times before you even start game banging, homie. You a baby, homie. You old enough to be my son. I ain't no 2,000 game beggar like you are, homie. I ain't no 2,000 game beggar. So anyways, worry about your Honda. Why, why are you talking? Worry about your Honda Accord. Worry about your Honda Accord. Worry about that little rap music you're playing. You damn near, four, you're 40 years old and you're still trying to act like you're young. You're, you're past 40 years old, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. I'll, I'll be that. Tell that to the LAPD. Tell that to the LAPD. Tell that to the LAPD. Tell that to the sheriff. That's what's wrong with our people, man. They're scary as hell when it comes to the so-called white man. He's scared of the white man. He ain't gonna say that to the LA sheriff, but he wanna beg on his brother. And we tell you to go ahead and do better and get away from your oppressor. The scripture said that. I didn't say that. The scripture said you shut down Mary. The oppressor, man. Go ahead, give me that. Let me tell you what the most high said. He gonna break up these interracial marriages, man. Do you know what her people done to our people? Her people raped, robbed, and killed your, your people, brother. But you are a bang against me to oppress her, man. But that's what that's how it is, man. Our, our people are coons, man. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. What did the most high say? Neither shall thou make marriages with them. You shouldn't be making marriages with them, man. You shouldn't be laying with nothing like that anyways. Thy daughter shall not give unto thy son, nor shall his daughter thou shall take unto thy son. For they will turn... For they uh, will turn away thy son from following me. Kai, what happened to Jonathan Major? We just broke out a story about Jonathan Major for Creed 3. He's messing with the so-called Snow Buddy. And his career was almost ended. And he got two of the hottest movies in, in, in the country right now with At-Man and Creed 3. But see, he got bad. He wasn't bad because we were bringing out the word. He was bad because I, I was talking about his eating by woman that looked like a whale. We're bold as lions up here. We don't care about that gang banging stuff. Cause you gonna be you gonna run against the LAP and the sheriff. Go ahead, kid. This is Proverbs chapter twenty-eight, verse one. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. What did that brother do? The wicked flee when no man pursue it. Flee when nobody pursue it, man. But the righteous. But the righteous are bold as a lion. But we're bold up a liar. We're not scared of you saying cuz or blood up here. Most of half of us was Crips and Bloods up here on these streets, man. I was cold with it, man. I started in 88 my, my game banger career. All the way to 2000, man. We don't care about none of that stuff, man. In the last day, it's going to be race wars. Dead bodies in the street, man. But you guys still want to be laid up with the enemy, man. Then when she turned against you, then you're going to say, we never told you anything. You can't say, I didn't know. I didn't know she was like that. That's her nature, man. The most high made these, uh, these people crooked, man. And souls not upright up in them. The scriptures say that, man. What's that scripture, Kadash, when it says, his souls not upright up in them? Well, you remember what verses that is? Most I say he didn't make this man and, and, and this woman to be his soul's not upright in them, man. The most high made them crooked, man. They them to be the evil doers on the planet, man. The so-called white man will never be straight in this in this kingdom, man. He's not made like that. Have a coat to and fold. Huh? Have a coat to and fold. God, you got that? So no matter how much, how many jobs he give you. 
how many positions he give you, you still will be at the bottom, man. Or if you're a billionaire, if he give you a contract, you can't say nothing. You can't say that you're an Israelite. They'll take all your riches away from you and call you anti-Semitic like they do with uh, Brother Kanye West. Two and four, man. Let's see what the most high said about the so-called white man. We know he's an evildoer on the planet, man. We know he's polluting the air, the water. Red lighting, keeping you in certain neighborhoods, man. Keeping all the wealth, store all the wealth. Go ahead, got it? This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter three, chapter two, verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Uh-oh, what did the most high say about a so-called white man? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. The most high said his soul is not upright up in here. The most high made this man like this, man. So no kubaya, no hand holding hands saying, oh my lord, kubaya. They ain't gonna work with the white man. He'll do that and stab you right in the back. Because his soul is not upright up in here. Give me that scripture that says, No hand, hold the hand. The wicked shall not be. Uh, what's that scripture? It said, No hand. Uh, Kadash. What's that? What's that? No hand, join the hand. God. All right, go ahead and bring it out. Whoever has it. Quick on the swords. So the man wanted to beat me up because I said, what are you doing with that, man? Golly. Why is our man always got a scrape at the bottom when they get the heat of my women, man? At least get a good looking one. <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna deal with one. God damn, we the only race that scrape to the bottom. I thought tax season was over with. <laughs> you usually you get one like that when tax season was around. Get a little something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Golly, we scrape at the bottom of the barrel, man. So he probably, probably had no place to stay, so she provided a roof over his head, I guess. I wasn't worried about it, man. That guy, that guy, he run, he lost so many fights, he had three teeth missing. So he, you could tell he ain't good at fighting, man. And then he had one guy throwing, throwing apples at me, man, or whatever he was throwing at me. I was like, I'm not worried. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? You guys? Okay. You just looking at the generator? Okay, okay. All right. You know you're an Israelite, brother? All right. You got to come back to the law statute of commandments of the Bible, man. You guys, for the law, 12 tribes of Israel, man. Teach your kids down, your sisters, or where they are to you, man. So we, if we out here to save one soul, we done our job, man. Because we know the most high don't want all you wicked Israelites. We know that. You got it? You got it, kid? Okay, go ahead. This is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So ain't gonna be no hand holding hand with the wicked. But the seed of righteous shall be delivered. So only the seed of righteous gonna be delivered, man. Which is the Israelites, man. So you think that you love this man? Kubaya, we are the world, we are the children. You remember that, that song with Michael Jackson? <laughs> that ain't gonna work, man. The most high don't want it that way, man. The most high separated us, man. That we are the world spirit ain't gonna work. The most high loves the Israelites only, man. The only reason why we're going through, we're going through because we disobeyed him. And we start watching other deities, man. Don't you guys get it? And we still to this day worship other deities. White Jesus, Buddha, Islam. And we still pissing off the most high God. That's why he's killing us, man. And he's using Esau as a whipping stick. That's who's God's um, whipping stick is it's so called Esau, but you don't see it, man. I got me a snow buddy, that's right. Golly, man, at least get you something that look like something. If you go, if you go, if you go straight, which we don't recommend you straight, but golly, Whew. 
She looked like she looked like a real life Miss Piggy, didn't she? All you do is they have their wigs. She looked like Miss Piggy, man. Hey, he got bad bitch ass, nigga. <laughs> That's our people, man. So you guys gotta understand, man. We're out here for you guys, man, because we love you guys, man. And we tell you guys, you guys have a chance to repent. Repent means you guys don't don't do the sin that you're doing no more. You can uh you guys are the only one to have repentance in this kingdom, man. The Israelites, man. The other nations is sealed already. The most high already know what he's gonna do with them. He's gonna destroy these other nations, man. But you have a chance to repent, man. And that's a good thing, man. That's a, you know, he Esau, that's his pride, man. Esau, he's prideful, like, move out my way, nigger. Yeah, you know, he has no class. So we out here for you so-called Hispanics, too. We're not only here for the blacks, we out here for you guys. We're out here to tell you that you guys are the chosen people. That's right, don't smile. You guys are the tribe of Esachar. You guys are really Israelites. You guys are the Israelites too. So you guys need to know that, man. We love you guys. We love our Hispanic brothers too, man. We out here for you guys as well. We're just out here for the African, the so-called African Americans. We want you guys to get it together too, man. Because the curses are heavily on you guys as well, man. You guys are locked up with us, man. You guys are going through the curses as well, man. You guys are living in the same neighborhood as we do, man. So we're telling you guys to repent, man. Come out of Esau's ways, man. Come out of homosexuality. Come out of lesbian. Being a lesbian, man. The most high is... He, he doesn't like lesbian, man. He doesn't like you being a homosexual, man. That's in the book of Leviticus, man. The most I say you should surely, surely die, man. That's what's going on with our people, man. You brother, man, come here with the B hat. Why we, hey, 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 with the Brooklyn hat on, man. I guess he don't want to listen, man. He got he got all the hangout spirit out of him, man. He don't want to hate. He don't want to listen to the word of God. That's 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 that's, 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 that's crazy, man. He had time to be hanging with these brothers, but I don't want to hear the word of the Lord, man. But that's our people, man. Our people don't want to listen, but that when, when, when both sides come back, it's gonna be too late. It's gonna be a dundada. Uh, give me Jeremiah 4.22 Jeremiah 4.22 Did you guys find what you guys looking for? You guys walked up three or four times No, no, I know that we're here for you guys We're here to tell you guys to Come out of your foolishness He, he walked, he walked Three or four times they found nothing. I don't see no girls on their arm. Have you seen any girls on their arm? They walking up and down the street. No girls, man. <laughs> Boy, back in my head, day, man, I would have I would have pulled a girl already, man. At least three or four numbers. <laughs> the book of Jeremiah, chapter four, verse twenty-two. For my people is foolish; they have not known me. They are Scottish children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. No knowledge, man. So I'm gonna wrap it up, man. I'm Rob Judah from HOI uh, Los Angeles. And we're in the Passover season right now. You guys should be in the Bible, man. You guys should be celebrating Passover, not Easter. That's what the death angel passed over us, man. And the Most High destroyed our enemies in Egypt. And drawed the Egyptians, man. And saved the Israelites, man. And he's going to do the same thing with the so-called white man. If you guys keep it a commandments, he's going to destroy the so-called white man, the evildoer on the planet. That's right. I called you an evildoer. 
because your people raped and robbed and killed all our people. So we're in Passover season, man. You guys should get it together, pray and repent, fast, and celebrate when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, man. So we got a Jesus saves over here, but he's only going to save the Israelites. Mr. Jesus saves over there, he's only here for the Israelites, but he ain't going to tell you that. That's straight Christianity right there, man. Like last, what was that, two weeks ago, I was, well, I was talking against those uh, Edomite uh, pastors. But, uh, you know, they'll see. So you going up next? Khan. Khan, Brother Rob Judah speaking in the spirit. Running these guys off the block. Incredible. All right, so um, we want to just confirm that we are definitely in the Passover season. And we want to take a minute to remember what that's about. But first off, let's get 1 Samuel 4 and 5, my brother. All right. 4 and 5. Because people don't understand we are out here to edify our people, to let them understand what's going on from a biblical paradigm. Because most people out here are just in their folly and foolishness out here in Hollywood, and they don't understand what they're trying to do, fighting their brothers, being evil, so forth and so on. And what we're trying to do is edify our people so they can come back to these law, statute, and commandments and get the kingdom. That's right. We're trying to seal one third plus the elect so that we can get out of here bring that out brother oh first samuel four and five uh we, that's what we're trying to do two thirds ain't gonna make it we saw some of them tonight perhaps i can't say who's gonna make it who's not i'm prayful that i'll make it but the point is some of y'all acting in such evil evilness and foolery that it's hard to believe you will be in the one third but we'll see We'll see. Hopefully they'll repent and come back to these law, statute, and commandments. Bring it out, brother. It's the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 4, verse 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Yahweh came unto the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. That's what we're doing. This is an Israelite camp. And we're trying to ring out that serious, mighty, mighty power that is Yahweh. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're here to represent. Now, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So the point being, the, the point being that <laughs> that what we're trying to remind our people, we're in the Passover season. Yes, in ancient Kemet, which uh, Alexandra the not so great later named Egyptos or today Egypt, which means bondage as pursuant to Exodus 20 and uh, uh, 2, the point is, not only were the Kemetic people destroyed, the firstborn, the Kemetic army, who people mistakenly call Egyptian, but also the Israelites were saved. And that's the point, as we see all of what's going on in the world today, the destruction, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the earthquakes, the wars, the proxy wars, the rumors of wars, we see all these things going on, and we better understand that the only way you're going to get saved from it is to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. There were, there were people in ancient Kemet, or what they call Egypt, who didn't make it, who didn't come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. It's not just the enemies. Some of you are also acting as if you're the enemy of the Lord. Why? Because you're following the ways of the heathen. That's right. And we can't do that. We got to be in the and the spirit of walking after our uh, uh, creator and our king and savior, Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Give me uh, Joel 2 and 27, brother. This is what we got to be doing. We can't be out there half-stepping and BSing because that ain't going to cut it. It's just not. And we really trying to get the one-third together so we can get out of here. But as the wrath comes down in these days of tribulation, mm -hmm. you best believe the only ones who will be spared are those who are walking accordingly with the law, statute, and commandments. It's that simple. And, of course, you have to be Israel. Bring that out, brother. This is Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. 
and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. In the midst of Israel. Not everybody in the midst of Israel as all this calamity is coming down. And I am Yahweh, your God, and none else. Your God, Israel, and none else. My opinion, no. My words, no. That's the Holy Scripture saying this. Go on. And my people shall never be ashamed. Talking about Israel should not be ashamed. That's what's going on. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit unto all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And this is what's going to happen. We're going to be ele elevated on another level spiritually. That's what's going to happen. We're going to be elevated. That's what's going to happen. All right? And then what you'll see is that we'll be spared from the wrath of the Most High as it comes down on our people who are unjust and our enemies. And this is what we're trying to avoid. Matter of fact, uh, let me get Psalms 147.19. This is what we're trying to avoid. What we're trying to do is be righteous. You see what's going on with the country. You see what's going on with the uh, ecology. You see what's going to weather. Everything is attacking America right now. It's not just America. Europe's being attacked. Many places in the world are being attacked. So what you got to do is make sure in the Passover season all this passes you over. And the way to do that is keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Bring that out, brother. Bring it out. Bring it out. Psalms 147 and uh, 19. This is the only way you can circumvent the wrath of the Most High. Not my opinion. This is what the scriptures indicate to us. That's how we learn these things, because we open the book and we read, where most people ain't reading nothing. Can't even read each other's uh, mannerisms. It's, 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 it's hell on earth out here in these streets. Book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto Israel, not everybody. Understand, statutes and judgments are for Israel because we're the chosen, we were given the law. Other people were created to be destroyed. So it's not necessarily a judgment in the same sense. It's just the will of the Most High. But you will be judged because you have been held accountable for what you was given to you in terms of the law that you refute or that you uh, turn against or turn your back to. Go on, brother. He has not dealt so with any nation. No other nation got that but Israel. And that's what Christian doctrine don't teach. We're the only ones who have it. And that's why it's up to you to maintain and do what's correct so that you can be passed over when all of it hits the fan, when the, when, when the Most High brings down his judgments on the earth. And he asked for his judgments. I have not known them. They don't know his judgments, like I said, because they were created to be destroyed. They were created to serve Israel, or they're created to punish Israel depending on what Israel does in terms of following the law, statute, and commandments. This is what we got to understand, people. It's not rocket science. And you know what? History bears that out. Everything that's happened in history, there's no, no dispute about what went on. Now let's look at what's going on real quick. Now you got Putin, the, uh, the leader of Russia, that they just said is uh, uh, they have a, a warrant for his arrest the uh, world court, because, but they didn't put a warrant out for Bush arrest, and he did a bunch of war crimes in Iraq. We didn't see anything about that, but now that war crimes because it's the Ukraine, because these are white people, that's, or, and, or better yet, also because this is the enemy of America, this is ridiculous. So uh, Julius uh, uh, Malimu, the brother in, uh, 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 he's a Hamite, a brother in uh, uh, South Africa, or what's Izania, what white folks call South Africa. He said, Putin is welcome to come here. And if necessary, we're going to meet him at the airport, take him to his meetings, take him back to the airport, and nobody going to arrest him. He came to South Africa yesterday. I didn't see no arrests yet. 
See, you guys playing with fire here, you could kill Gaddafi when he was introducing the dinar and going to bankrupt the West uh, banking system. You could stop that by killing Gaddafi. But you can't kill Russia and China and, and, and uh, India and uh, South Africa and Brazil. That's too much for you to deal with without going to a major third world war. These people have already conspired with Saudi Arabia. And now what they've done, they killed a petrol dollar, which was uh, back in 1974 set up so that everybody got to buy oil with dollars. They got to change their currency into dollars to buy the oil since 1974. That's what kept your dollar strong. And when people didn't respect it who had oil, they were attacked. Like Saddam Hussein, they didn't take him out of power in the first Iraq war. But in the second Iraq war, he made one statement the day before they invaded. He said, as of tomorrow, we're going to denominate all our oil in euros. And they said, what? Are you messing with our money? Are you crazy? And they went in there and they took him out. He was hung in a, in a trial and so forth. But they took him out, which they didn't do in the first war because he was a strong man in the area, keeping the Kurds and Arabs in line, keeping the Shiite and the Sunni in line, all of that. But now that was finished. And this is the same thing here. They can't do nothing because now all these countries are going to start going with the BRICS nation's currency, which is going to be backed by gold. First currency backed by gold since Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard on, what was it, August 15, 1971. The, the dollar hasn't been backed by gold since then. It's now a finite currency. It's just paper backed by a liquidity ratio, math computation. It's worthless. And now you're going to see, now that people don't need it to buy oil anymore. So what's going to happen? All these countries got all these dollars on reserve to buy oil and now they're gonna to switch to the BRICS currency, which is gonna be backed by gold to buy that oil. All those dollars are gonna be dumped onto the international market and they're gonna come back to these shores. And when they do, do you think you see inflation now? Wait till all those dollars come back to this country. The inflation is gonna be unbelievable. That's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. It's already happening. You had uh, Saudi Arabia make a deal with China to be their biggest customer in the next 50 years. America was their biggest customer the last 50 years, but now that's different. They made a deal with Russia to protect the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who has the most crude oil. America had military bases there protecting them. Now Russia's going to protect them. You have nothing coming in this country now except financial desolation. Go ahead and get uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 7 like Brother bought out earlier. Because that's what's going on now. It ain't nothing else happening but that. It's time to shore this thing up. Because the Passover season of all of these natural disasters that God is putting down on the earth is going to also come in a financial form. Just like Brother was talking about earlier. It's good, Brother Kadash. And that's what's going on. And you guys better get hip to this quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because adjustments will have to be made because all of this soft lifestyle is going to be finished. And I'm talking about it's coming 90 miles an hour. Ain't nothing you can do to stop it. Bring it out, brother. This book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 7. Bring it out. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. Curses. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. You see that? On the enemies. Who runs this country? Well, that'll be our enemies. And they're going to be persecuted, and you're going to go down with them because you don't have a free stake in this society. This is what's going on. Ain't nothing you can do. Nothing. That's what's going to happen. And don't forget, we got other enemies out here who try and besmirchify us as a, as a people group. I'm talking about Israel. And say that we're the evil ones doing all these evil things. All we're doing is reading the, uh, the scripture. That's all we're doing. And telling you what God prophesies will happen. And then you got people like we talked about before, the ADL, the Jewish Defamation League. They come out calling us anti-Semitic, which we're Semitic and they're not. But the point is this. Don't forget how they started. In 1913, when uh, uh, Leo uh, 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 raped that 13-year-old girl and uh, uh, Mary Fagan. 
and killed her and then try and blame it on the black janitor. And then when it, he got convicted of the crime, Leo Frank got convicted of the crime and went to jail. And his lawyers and him started the Anti-Defamation League. Why? Because they hate our guts. Then they start sanctioning Hollywood movies. And what did they do then? When they sanctioned the movies, they uh, started saying which movies were allowed and which not. They not only allowed, but also financed Birth of a Nation in 1915. And this was a Klan movie glorifying the Klan, uh, uh, giving a revisionist history of what happened in Reconstruction. And it caused the rise of the Klan starting in 1915 again in this country after it was pretty much dead from 1901. Then what happened? Then you had Wall Street get attacked in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. You had Rosewood get attacked in uh, Rosewood, Florida, 1923. You had all these lynchings and murderings going on with their backing of the Klan. We talked about how they were in the uh, start of it with their Confederate soldier uh, uh, cemeteries that are Ashkenazi in Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy, one of the capitals. Then this is the point they had Montgomery, Alabama, Richmond, and then the, uh, they fled to Danville was their last capital of Virginia. But the point is, you don't even understand who your enemy is. You got to understand these things. You got to understand because now the wrath of God is coming down to touch this place. It's already happening. And, you know, soon there's going to be more famine. And why is all this happening? The fentanyl is going to be a, a, a famine in the land. All these things, because, and, and wars, proxy wars like in the Ukraine, which were, and also currency wars. Uh, oh, by I was shot, All right, my brother, take care of uh, and, and then... And then what we got is all of these things coming ahead. Why? Because these people are, are eugenics. They're trying to have population control. They know they're in the minority. They're trying to eliminate a bunch of our people so that they can try and inherit the riches of the earth. They're talking about it's too many people. No, it's not enough for them and too many of us. That's what they mean to say. This is why they're trying to eradicate our people. This is what's going on. Right, right. And you guys are up here partying and following up in Hollywood, oblivious to everything going on around you, don't even know what's going on. And you could care less, right? And these people are spending days and nights up in think tanks trying to decide how do you create your demise, how to kill you off as a people group. And you don't even know what's happening. Right, right. That's amazing to me. And even if you're not that thoroughly uh, in, engulfed in history or in modern uh, uh, politics or current affairs, you can just read it in the scripture. It's already in the book of uh, a prophecy. It's all right there how all these nations are going to gain up against America and destroy this place with thermonuclear fire. You guys, man, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, Israel. Yasharallah talking to you, but more so I'm talking to our people that uh, don't know who they are. But of course, like the scripture said, only one third of our people going to make it. The other two thirds going to be destroyed in the lake of fire, meaning nuclear catastrophe. You just going to be destroyed. Ain't nothing you can do. The skin's going to melt off your face when them nuclear missiles hit. That's what's going to happen. And why is it going to happen? Because you following the ways of the heathen. And you're not following the scripture like the Bible said. You can't follow the ways of the heathen. You got to go rather to Israel, not to the heathen. But you guys will learn. Well, some of you won't learn until it's too late. But that's just what it is. Don't make us any better. We struggle it too. We just trying to have the, uh, a, a correct way to follow the law, statute, and commandments so that hopefully these things will pass us over like here in the Passover season. That's all we're trying to do. But you guys, I don't know, man. It, it seems like you guys are uh, obsessed with doing the wrong thing, self-aggrandizement, don't care about nothing but having a good time. Like Brother said earlier, getting drunk, getting high, being all uh, sexed out. That's all you care about. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that, well, that's a heathen though. So we, that's that's his nature. That's what he gonna care about. I'm talking about our people right now, because the Most High put a difference between us and them. It's uh, uh, uh give me that uh, gossip. You know, that's that's from the beginning of time. It's been that way. Our only problem is we keep going into perpetual slavery and uh, 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 domination by our enemies that God sent against us because we don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments as a collective, as a people group. Some of us individually, but as a people group. And that's the real problem. You got that, brother? Bring that out. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to, to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Wait a minute, what did he do with the sons of Adam? When he separated the I thought we were supposed to just uh, sing Kumbaya and be one people all over the world. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now we need to understand something. I didn't write that. That's been on the earth for thousands of years, right? I didn't write that. That's exactly what the word of God indicates happened. And there it is. So, you know, we are separated and we are, thank the most high part of the chosen. And as a part of the chosen, you have to walk that straight line with the law, statute, and commandments. Because if you don't, you're going to be walking in the ways of the heathen. And you will thus be destroyed with them as we just brought out in the book of Deuteronomy. So let's try and get this together, Israel. We, we, time is running then. The time, the end is near. We don't know the date, but we can see the signs of what's going on in the earth. And it tells you in the scripture, when you see these things, the time is coming near. I know the game's on tomorrow. I know the club's happening tonight. I know you're doing this, that, and the other. But it don't mean it ain't coming. It's coming 90 miles an hour. So we got to get ready for that or we're going to be consumed by it. And in the spirit of the Passover season, what we need to do is give me a, a Revelation 1 and 3, brother. What we need to do in this time is to make sure we're abreast of what the scriptures are telling us to do. And how do you do that? 